it seems like the network, my network is a, a little bit poor. And I'm sorry for that. I apologize. Um, we've got a very important issue to discuss today. Value system change agenda day 12. It's been explosively explosive in the last 11 days. This, I want to create an indulgence to help me share this, this link on your timeline. Today is going to be powerful, explosive, inspiring, and uh, you're going to leave this place today fired up to take the necessary step that you should take to become a better person. And so my process engineering background is always influencing my perception and my analysis of issues. And uh, the Japanese, we always want to, that is something called continuous improvements. Continuous improvements. That is the principle that the Japanese uh, companies in Japan, like Toyota, that's the, that's the, uh, the philosophy they use uh, for production of cars. And, uh, and continuous improvement is at the uh, foundation of doing things well always wanting to do things well do things well and becoming better that is why the japanese they are one of the most efficient people on half toyota is one of the most efficient company in the world they will use very little resources to produce big big materials big cars and so i've spoken to many people friends and uh, colleagues who are complaining about the kind of life they lived in 2017 Oh, things were tough. Oh, I'm living in a very bad country. Oh, most of those excuses sometimes are attainable and realistic. But for how many years and how many months are we going to be complaining about the country we are living in? Uh, so let's try and see what we can do to make our life better. And uh, for some of you listening to me who are Christians, the devil is not the one blocking you. <laughs> I don't want to offend my Christian friends. I am not saying that there are no spiritual influences and manipulation in people's life. And um, I'm a pastor and uh, I understand that to details. But I don't want us to give Satan too much credit for what we are going through. And in some occasions, it's not the devil that is blocking people. It is the kind of value system, the mindset that people have that are blocking them and making them to become non-competitive. So, the quality of your skills, the quality of your ability and expertise goes a long way in defining where you get to in life. Whatever you, whoever you are, a preacher, an engineer, a pharmacist, whatever profession you have on earth, if you are better than who you are today, you will be sought after. People will look for you. People will look for you. If you are better than you are today and so i've got a very important seminar discussion this this evening which will really really benefit a lot of my friends and i put together a kind of a simple uh life and career audit matrix where am i now that is in column one where do i need to be that is in column two is there any difference between where i am now and where i'm going that's in column three. And then what do I need to do to achieve that? So do you do personal audits? Many Christians don't do audits. We are asked the Holy Spirit to audit us. Many Christians don't do audits. 100% focus is on God and on the spiritual. And that is why many Christians are lagging behind unbelievers. Um, the unbeliever doesn't have any problem with spiritual. He's just using his mind and his brain and his natural skills and talent. And they're making more progress. The many Christians, and it ought not to be so. Jesus was the wisest people, wisest personality on earth. Mark chapter 6, verse 1. When the Pharisees met Jesus, they said, What wisdom is this that such mighty works are done by him? What wisdom? When they saw the kind of output, the heart comes, the job that Jesus was doing, everybody was amazed. Jesus turned them upside down. And they didn't just hear him speak with them. They saw wisdom. They saw the works that he was doing. His activities, his decisions, 
were full of wisdom. And the Bible says we have the mind of Christ as Christians. So if you have the mind of Christ, you should think like Christ. I should think like Christ. So any thinking, any thought pattern that is lower than Christ's standard, it is a big concern to God in heaven. So I have three, I've divided this seminar into three different sessions. And uh, I have connected my YouTube channel. I don't know why. I don't know why um, I am not, I'm not uh, connected on YouTube. Uh, I've, I've connected it already. And I see people waiting to connect with me on YouTube. Uh, please, I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on here. Um, I did it myself. And uh, I don't know why it's not coming up. Um... Let me see. Uh, uh, something is going on, uh, but let's see if it's going to work now. Let me tell you the characteristics of the world you and I are living now. Many of us still think that we are living in 1964 or 1972. And so many of us are still running our lives using the mindset of people that lived in those years, in those eras. Things have changed things have changed you and i are living in one of the most sophisticated environments regardless of the country you're living in now you are connected to the old world that is the concept of globalization globalization is a concept in business that speaks for integration between different countries <clears throat> the barriers that existed between countries have been broken Countries are now working together. The entire more than 170 countries in the world, they are like a global village. Within one minute, you are speaking to people in China. I come here now talking to someone in Japan. So there is nothing like the distant part of the world again. We are all together. It's like we are together in the same room. So it is becoming more difficult for people that are average to make any impact in this world. So if you are average in 2017 and you put the blame on the devil, it is time for you to have a change of it. Sorry, the connection is a bit poor today, but I'm going to try as much as possible to compress everything within an hour. Within an hour. And now, back to where I am now. The network distracted me. And, and uh, let me tell you something. The characteristics of the world you and I are living in. Number one, I'll give you four characteristics of the world we are living in now. Number one, we are living in an environment of advanced sophistication and technological innovation hey we are living in a world where you do not have to go to the counter to check in when you are traveling they now have personalized check-in self-check-in machines across many airports all across the globe maybe in many african countries in some african countries that doesn't operate but in many airports in europe and in america they have self-checking machine you are living in a very sophisticated environment so why didn't god take you and i out of this environment when we got born again as christians and he kept us in this environment in fact we are fulfilling last day's prophecy daniel said that in the latter days knowledge shall increase knowledge shall increase so the advances we are seeing in technology they are proofs of fulfillment of the daniel prophecy so it is not by mistake that you are living in this present world so from january to december have you taken a stock of your output the results you are able to achieve in your career and your sphere of influence and if you have it if you had a target in january and as of december can you take a retrospective look and look from january to december are there any gaps did i actually complete what i plan to complete was there a difference between my life in 2017 comparatively with my life in 2016? If you repeated the same thing, the same thing you did in 2015, you did in 2016, in 2017, the same job, the same salary, the same income level, the same number of customers. You had 10 customers in 2014, 10 customers in 2015, 2016, the same thing, 2017, the same thing, and nothing has changed. It's a big problem. In fact, as a Christian, it is a big problem. Satan is not responsible for where many Christians are, find, are found themselves. Many of us are too lazy to do what we should do. Most of the times we think that prayers and miracles are a faster route. And that is the mindset of many Christians. It is quicker to pray and have faith 
and believe God for miracles than to apply principles of hard work. Now, if somebody tells you you're going to become a billionaire tomorrow by sowing a seed, why should you go and work? It's logic. It's logic. How can somebody tell you to give hundred dollars and tomorrow morning I will get a phone call from Bill Gates and I will be winning the contract of hundred million dollars? I want me to go to school. I wouldn't do that. That is one of the problems that the focus on miracles has done to Africans, the black men, because we see miracles and supernatural, which are valid. They are very valid, scriptural and valid. We see them as an escape route from hard work. And so when we are skilled, when our mindset is skilled towards getting things done fast, quick results, then we will do everything and anything possible to circumvent the process of life. And God is a God of process. I've said it several times. God is a God of process. Even if your product is good and the process is bad, every other thing is bad in the sight of God. Moses was asked to speak to a rock. Moses smote the rock. Did water come out or not? Water, clean water came out. Clean, good water. And the people drank and were full. So what happened to Moses' ministry? It ended that day. It ended that day. And so the question any wise Christian should ask is this. Ah, but result came out of that experience. God is not moved by results. God is moved by process. Doing things according to pattern. Doing it right. So when God was giving Noah the agenda to build and hack, God gave him dimensions, length, breadth. To the act, if Noah had built his own ark and had used different dimensions, there would have been an hack. Maybe the ark would have survived the flood. But God would have disciplined Noah so much. So, as a Christian, I want us to go into the new year with a different mindset. Doing things right. If I have to pay the price of five months of training to become rich, let me pay that price now. Let me pay that price now. Anybody you have met that got something done by miracle, God would have trained them in some other areas of their life. Now listen to this thing. If everything you are getting from God is by miracle, as a Christian, you will not be disciplined and you will not learn and grow. If everything, you want a job, it came by miracle. You want a child, it came by miracle. You want a, a, a promotion, it came by miracle. You didn't qualify for any of them. How do you want to go to maturity as a Christian? Even those people in the scriptures that got miracles from God, it is just in one area of their life. Because the Bible is a summary, the Bible doesn't reveal all the details of their lives. What Abraham went through to become rich, the suffering, the rigor, the labor, the Bible didn't record it. We just saw that, oh, he became rich. Solomon got wisdom from God and became rich. Other aspects of his life where he went through hardship, we didn't see it in the scripture because God did those things. So even if somebody gets a miracle in, a car in his career, in some other areas of his life, he will not escape the process of training. God will make sure he is still trained in some areas. Something somewhere in his life will not work. Even though he may get miracles in some other areas, something somewhere in his life will not work. Mm -hmm. And that is always the case when a Christian shifts his responsibility to God and sees everything in life as a product of supernatural influence. So we are raising people that have no value for hard work, no value for discipline, no value for ethics and work ethics. That has serious and severe consequences on the entire African continent. Our world today is a world of advanced sophistication. Human beings are now losing their roles to computers and machines. In the olden days, in like 50, 60 years ago, many people employed a lot of people. Now, many companies now, they are cutting down on their numbers of employees and replacing the roles of men with machines. A lot of software that can do what humans can do more efficiently more efficiently so if a company that used to employ 500 people will not be employed 50 people you will know that those 50 people will be the best they will employ because the number of applications will increase but they're looking for 50 people so they will look for the best so if you're not the best as a christian what would be your lot? what would be your lot? It's a very serious thing. Let me tell you something again. We are now living in a world where many companies are now focusing on outsourcing. Many companies will go to places like China and India and employ people and put them there. 
We call it offshore, offshoring, offshoring. They will have a company in Lagos and then they will have their customer service staffs in India because labor is very cheap in those parts of the world. So that company in Lagos, Nigeria will just employ 20 people and have like 200 people in, in, in India, Mumbai, or in Beijing, who will be doing the same thing people that will be living in Lagos would have been doing. So if you're living in Lagos, Nigeria, and you want to gain employment with that company, and you are not superior, you are not superb, and then you see your applications being thrown out all the time. You are living in an offshoring environment. Offshoring environment. Having a PhD or a BSc, they do not matter so much again in our generation. They do because to even employ PhDs and, and MBA holders is it's more burdened for organizations. They have to pay them a lot of money. So they go and employ people that have high schools qualification that they will train for three months or six months in India, who will collect peanuts from them. And we still do the same job that you and I can do. So you see why it is important for you to become the best in your area of expertise. So that even if they are looking for 10 people in the city, you'll be number one out of them. You'll be number one until you get your life to a point where you have a skill that 1,000 people living in your street does not have. You haven't started your journey at all. You haven't started your journey at all. You and I are living in a place now where employers of labor in big corporations around the world are looking for people who can think outside the box. People who are smart, smart thinkers. So I've attended interviews where you thought you know something and by the time they begin to ask you questions, they divert the focus away from what you are carrying, your degrees and certificates. And they begin to ask you smart questions. Smart questions. They are looking for the smartest people to employ. If you are a Christian, you are, look, you are listening to me. If you are the head of Microsoft, would you employ you for that job? I want you to become the HR manager of Microsoft and answer this question. 20 people have applied for that role. Three of them went to Harvard. Two went to Oxford. One went to Yale. Three went to Cambridge. And you have gone to one university somewhere and you have you don't even have any extras to offer. If you are the HR manager of Microsoft, will you employ you? Will you employ you? You and I are now living in a generation where employers are looking for young people. Young people. All the immigration programs that Australia is doing, America is doing, Canada is doing, they are all age dependent. The people that are selected for us are the young people. Young people, 25, 27, 28. By the time you are getting to 33, 34, 35, your points begin to drop. So if you are old and you're older than 35 and you don't have anything unique to offer, that is where problem starts for Christians. And then we turn the baton over to God. And so my role and my job this afternoon is to inspire all my listeners that you should do an audit of yourself. Don't ask the Holy Spirit to audit you. You can audit yourself. Where I am now? Where am I supposed to be? What are the differences between where I am now and where I'm going? And then what are the resources I need to achieve what I want to achieve? Now, let me tell you why many of us are not competitive. Why you keep looking for a job or why you have been on the same job with the same salary for the past 10 years. Or why nobody is employing you. You may think you have the reason because I'm black. No, they are not employing you, not because you are black. <laughs> I have said these things several times. If you can score more goals than Lionel Messi, you can score more goals than Cristiano Ronaldo, and you are a black man, and you even amplify your blackness, you take Chakumavir an issue. <laughs> Skin color is no longer a barrier. If you begin to look at yourself as disadvantaged, because of your color, you will miss the point. I am not saying that they don't discriminate at certain levels, but if you have unique skills and you can compete against the best in the world and Ronaldo can score 30 goals per week and you are scoring 60 goals per week, they will throw away your color. <laughs> they will throw away your accents. You don't speak American English, means nothing. They will throw it away as a Christian. As a Christian, 
your goal in life is to be like Jesus. If you know how Jesus was, how he lived on heart, you'll be amazed. Jesus was the most brilliant personality in his time. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. Any question they asked Jesus, if, before they asked him questions, he knew what was in their heart. <laughs> the Pharisees were the doctors of law. Jesus was more brilliant than those that have PhDs. All those Pharisees and Sadducees were PhD holders in theology. And so at age 12, Jesus was already mesmerizing them. The level of his wisdom, the level of his knowledge was second to none when he was physically on earth. That is why the Bible says we have the mind of Christ. So every Christian has the potential to operate at the level of Jesus. So your standard is not a man, really. Your standard should be Christ. Just in every department of the game, Jesus was the best. In every department. Let's even take the supernatural out of it now. In terms of excellence, in terms of result, in terms of wisdom, in terms of communication, Jesus was the best. The best. So if the Bible says we have the mind of Christ, it means that you and I, our minimum standard should be Christ's level of wisdom. You are living in a generation that is becoming increasingly competitive and difficult, difficult to break with ordinary bachelor's degree or master's degree. There are thousands of people with master's degrees that are roaming the streets of Africa today. And I want to tell you, why do you think people are not competitive? Why are many of us not attracting global employers? Why is Microsoft not employing people from Africa as much as they employ people from Europe, India, and North America? Why don't they recruit people? If they have 100 spaces, they will give 95 to people that are in their location with certain qualifications and will only pick five from the black environment. Why are they doing that? Number one, poor education. Poor, even when we have high quality education, the attention is not on experience. The attention is on theory. Majority of us lived or live in countries where all we boast of is theory. Definition of chemistry. Definition of this. And I've said this many times. When many African doctors come to America, come to Canada, come to UK, they cannot practice medicine. Not because they are not good on theory. They want them to go through their own process of training, of writing exams, because they don't trust their, their degrees. A certificate and that's a statement of fact there is a difference between memorizing books and being able to apply what you have known so if you have schooled in africa and you have a master's degree and you find yourself in australia you observe you go through a lot of challenges for the first few months or for the first few weeks depending on your area of career you can't just tender that degree and ask them to open the door of their offices they ask you are you certified you have got a professional degree somewhere they want to see if you are at par with their own people who have quality skills, quality education. So it is of no use for a Christian to keep praying and fasting, praying and fasting, praying and fasting. And many people have fasted and prayed with no results. Many people are using seed sowing as a bribe to secure a job that when they get, they will go and ruin their personality and their career. I've made this very funny analogy before. Have we ever found a man that sowed a seed to get a job as a pilot of a plane. He doesn't know how to fly a plane. And he's believing God and giving offering. Lord, I applied to a job with Boeing in Germany. I want to be flying Boeing 747. I receive it in Jesus' name. And he's praying. He's sacrificing. And that man comes to the airport. And you are going on a journey. And he comes to you wearing the pilot cap. And wearing the pilot uniform. And he's shaking your hands and telling you, My name is Captain James. Um, you are, um, you, are, you are flying with me. I'm going to airlift you to Japan from Toronto. And uh, you know what's going to happen? I actually didn't go to school. I didn't go to school to learn how to fly a plane. But I saw the seed in church last week. And I believe God, I have my faith, that we will land. Will you follow him? <laughs> Even if you have paid $10,000 for that flight, will you not forfeit your ticket? <laughs> this man is going to crash me in, in, in the middle of, of, of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> That is how many Christians behave. You don't have skill for something. There is a difference between being qualified for something and you are praying and asking God to favor you be, and not being qualified at all. You don't know how to operate that machine at all. 
and you want them to give you that job that is fraud that is fraud that is foolishness and fraud and so you see many christians carrying bsc and masters again all over the place and they are not competitive nobody is giving them job 1965 you are living in 2017 many companies are now offshore many companies are now offshoring there are many indians chinese young 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 girls 21 22 they are super brilliant they have just diploma and they are so good that they will our present profile is too weak for the next level our present profile is too weak for the next level why don't you try it go and find it why you may be skipped you know there are some things we do as christians i am the first i am not the last <laughs> i have prayed that prayer many times and i still pray it lord i am the first i am not the last you know what that statement does to us as christians i am the first it's scriptural that's one of the blessings that god gave through moses to the israelites you shall be the head and not the tail does that word work for every african when they are looking for the best can you confess i am the first and not the last and secure that job with dell in the u.s when they want to employ people to manage a company to turn the company around from making millions to making billions do they look for people who confess i am the first i'm not the last you must have something to put on your table and the problem we are having let me digress a little bit. The problem we are having in the body of Christ in Africa is because our pastors don't emphasize personal development and personal responsibility. They put everything on God and use all kind of manipulation to make Christians see God as a dispenser, a water dispenser. Anything you want, God dispenses it to you. Anything you want, God dispenses it. Just press that button. Rubber stamp. God will rubber stamp anything you want. And they divert attention away from people and put all the attention on God. Everything is supernatural. And I've learned my lesson in a very hard way. After me, myself, I went through so many challenges and failures. After sowing so many stupid seeds that I sowed, I am regretting some of the seeds I sowed in the past because of some of the stupid things I did. And I said, God, why didn't I know what I know now 25 years ago? 30 years ago, one of my friends said, well, God allowed you to go through it so that you can learn now and teach others. So if I had known what I know today, I would have been far, 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 far greater than where I am today. I bless God for what I'm doing today. Thank Him for it. I'm grateful to Him. But it should have been bigger and greater. Because majority of the resources I should have used to help a lot of people set up foundations, set up charity, I just used them in a very foolish way. I wasted a lot of finance and funds that God gave to me. On foolish and stupid things, majority of whom have to do with so so insist, so insist, so insist, so insist, so insist, to escape the process of life. So insist to become the best when you don't have the qualification of the best. <laughs> so insist to be employed at King Fahd Hospital, Saudi Arabia, as the best doctor. And when you have just one year work experience and you have no knowledge of the technology people use to do operation to do brain surgery you know nothing about it but i saw one million naira, one million cents one million dollars i gave it to social social church and then and you apply and apply and there was no results more than 98 percent of the seed i sold i didn't have one result for them only on extremely few occasions that god spoke to me directly go and bless this person or this missionary give him something that was when i saw supernatural more than 98 percent of all the experiences of my seed sowing yielded no results. God made sure I went through the process of life, went to school properly, studied properly, read properly, apply for job, prepare myself, do interview, do resume and CV preparation, ac accumulate degrees and certification. I went through the rigor thoroughly. God made sure I didn't escape the process. It is today that I know why God did that. So I could mentor many other people and show them the truth. This is what is called success. Sustainable success. Not eat and run success. That many of us are chasing. So many Christians are not competitive because we have no quality education. 
Quality is not in our world. It is products. Quantity that we're looking for. Let me just get it anyhow. I don't care the process. People who say, I don't care about the process, they end up being in trouble. Like Moses, where we got. Moses didn't care about the process. Moses was caring about the water. And God proved to him that, hey, the way I handle my leaders is, 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 is different. Many of us have poor presentation and communication. One of the most critical skills that have been looked out for in becoming the best in any area of your life, regardless of your profession, whether you are a preacher or an engineer or an accountant, communication is one of the pillars of success in life. Ability to communicate effectively with people. A majority of us from Africa are not taught that at all. The way they design our, our, our education, our structure, they don't design it to equip us to be good communicators. And I've, I've observed this in, among so many Africans that I've met overseas and I've done a lot of teachings around this area. And many of us are trying to communicate to getting a job, getting a project, getting something done in our career with a big corporations in America. The communication skill is poor. Presentation skill is poor. Our CV writing skills are poor. There are globally acceptable quality of CVs and resumes. And so I've met many people who submitted resumes to me and they put everything in bold capital, black, master's degree holder. They bold in everything and it was in capital letter. I just removed it and I just deleted it. But that same person will go to the church on Sunday and roll on the floor from corner to corner. I'm going to give you several hours of praise so that I can get a big job. That is the problem we are combating with now in Africa. And it is my duty with the little knowledge God has given me to encourage my brothers and sisters listening to me that you don't want to run the race of 2018 the way you ran it in 2017. You've got to do things differently. You've got to submit proposals differently. You've got to make sure you edit your work to the best quality. You've got to avoid errors. Errors in your resume. You've got to read them through completely and thoroughly. You've got to go online. There are so we are so much blessed in this generation. There are hundreds and thousands of examples, sample resumes online. Sample resumes of people, accountants working with Deloitte, with Accenture in the US. They put their resume online. Why don't you pattern your resume after that structure? Look at the structure and organize it to be of the best. So when people are applying for a job in the company, your own resume stands out of the crowd. They have found 500. They pick your own out out of the 500. Wow. Before they even read the content, the way you design it, that thing is something that is in the mind. It's a value system. It's a value system. Many Christians don't know what I'm talking about. It is a God we do it generation we have. God we do it. In one of my books, I said something. Running your life with the mentality that God will do everything is the highest level of foolishness. Because you and I know God doesn't do everything. <laughs> God doesn't do everything, my friends. God doesn't do everything. If God does everything, I will be maybe I will be the president of America, of, of, of America today. If God does everything, maybe I will be the prime minister of Britain. <laughs> but God is a God of principle. He doesn't respect people, but he respects principle. Africans have a jack of all trade mentality. We are not experts at specific areas. Jack of all trade. Our university system, educational system, doesn't train people to focus on their area of speciality. So I've met people who studied engineering in Africa. In year one, they will do 20 courses. Year two, 19 courses. Year three, 18 courses. And they do kind of irrelevant subjects. <laughs> now, when they come abroad, year one, they do seven courses. Year two, they do eight courses. <laughs> because the white man will focus on what matters most. And so if you have found a certain environment, you can't control it. I mean, you're in Africa, you can't control it. But you are the one that will now train and retrain yourself. You retrain yourself through personal development. Who is a mechanical engineer? Mechanical engineering has different areas. Is it automobile engineering? Is it valve control system you want to focus on? Is it gearing system? There are so many areas of speciality. But Africans have a jack of all trade approach to things. 
and you cannot compete on a global scale if you are a jack of all trade. Imagine you can play defense, you can play attack, you are a good goalkeeper, you can play mid midfield. I want to get a contract with Real Madrid, and I ask you, which area do you fit into? Say, I fit, I, I can keep. I'm a goalkeeper. I, I can be a defender. I can uh, do midfield. I can. They're just laughing at you <laughs> because they have each player on their team with unique skills, with a different coach, trainer, the master that master. That Cristiano Ronaldo is is always wearing. Is always on the attack. If you see his personal trainers. They train him, they do a kind of training for his leg, they tie ropes on his waist and tie the rope to a kind of a car and they ask him to be running and the car will be slowing down so as to train his leg. He cannot tell them how to be a goalkeeper. No. So if you don't have any area of core strength, we call it core competence. Your area of core competence. One skill that no other person has. One. One. One thing that no other person has, you know, you want to know what I mean? You know my own skill. I've got two, I've got many other skills, but two, I've got two skills. Two, two. Number one is the ability to speak, stand before people, deliver speeches, deliver messages, deliver seminars, do workshops. I'm prolific in that area. And two, the ability to write. So I will not, not take my money and be investing on the ability to run. What does that have to do with my life? So all my money and my resources are being devoted on my writing skills and my speaking skills. So I keep buying books. I keep buying books. I keep buying books. I keep buying books. Learning from other people. Reading from them so I can be brilliant and intelligent and make sense when I'm speaking. So as to make sure that when I'm speaking at least, people can be sleeping when I'm speaking. <laughs> because I want to make sense to my generation. And my writing skills, I keep writing books, writing articles. The more I write, the better I become. I will not say because I'm a good writer and I don't write in a month. It's not possible. So everybody must have a core skill. If you have dark of all trade mentality, you think you are brilliant. You're not brilliant. You're not brilliant. I can do who are you? I'm everybody. I can do everything. And you think that is a, a statement of pride that builds your ego. Some people want to tell you they know how to do everything. And that is something that gives them competence. No. When you come to the Western world and you begin to apply for jobs or you want to do something, they will ask you, what can you do? You can't tell them you can do everything. <laughs> want to be a better person in 2018? Identify your area of core strength, core competence, and publish it and invest in it to a point where they are looking for one person out of one million. See, this man is different. Everybody types 100 words per minute. He types 1,000 words per minute. Regardless of the demons that you are claiming are, are after you, they will give you the job. Because every company wants the best. The best. If you are the best, you will stand out from the rest. If you are the best, you will stand out from the rest. <laughs> Many of us do not know that computer has taken over the whole world. There is nothing you know how to do today that doesn't have a computer application that can do it. Tell me, music. I'm a musician. I play the piano. I play the keyboard. Do you know all kinds of software that exist now that can teach people how to play keyboard, that can teach people how to play guitar? All kinds of softwares that they have developed that play guitar. They play guitar themselves. And you'll be watching like this, and the software will be teaching you a flat, uh, sorry, B, C sharp, D, key, F, and it will do it excellently. Name the profession you have today. Agri, chemistry, engineering, fashion designing, all kinds of software exist that design clothes that will tell you these clothes can fit into this person's body, body size. Everything that we are doing on earth today has a computer application. So if you don't know how to use a computer and you are still using desktop or the typewriter people are using 1942 and you are praying, I want to be global. You just be local. I want to be global. God doesn't answer that kind of prayer. You will not get job with 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 Dell, like a Dell in the US, and tell them when you get to the boardroom, I don't know how to do control S, control P. Those are foundational basic controls. 
basic logic on, on the computer. The computer has gone advanced. Many of the things I'm saying today are not taught Christians. Many of our pastors don't teach this kind of a thing. When you teach people this kind of thing, I'm saying you are making them to become independent. They won't depend on you and on your prayers. But what they do is that they don't they divert attention from these ones and focus on miracles so that the people can depend on them and they can manipulate and oppress them. That is the problem we are combating with in our generation as Africans. When you teach people this kind of thing, I'm saying you are empowering them. They will not need you anymore. And that is the ultimate for the gospel. The gospel is not designed to raise babies. It is to raise people that will be matured. Who will develop into the fullness of the stature of Christ. That was what Apostle Paul stood for. That was what he stood for. Not raising kindergartens and babies. Who are forever depending on the breast milk of the pastor. And they are running after you. But when you train them. They know how to speak in interview. They know how to write proposals. They know how to do business. They know how to be creative in their respective areas of career. And they are growing. And they, they will not forget you. You will have to manipulate them. They will come and remember you and give you money. Without manipulating them. Say, ah, Pastor taught us. Ah, Pastor helped me. I know a man of God in the UK. He is the one that looks for job for his members. Anywhere he knows that they, they are employed people, he will call them. And he has sometimes calls them, connect them with the man, and help them to receive. The man was getting people employed in his church. Before they knew what was happening, the church exploded. He doesn't manipulate them. They come and they run after him. That, our father, our father. He doesn't ask them to call him father. But they said, no, 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 no. we are not mates. They will put money in the envelope and go and give him. Without asking for it, he doesn't manipulate. He doesn't use them. He makes sure everybody is successful in the church. If you are a doctor, he will make sure he looks for people that have the biggest hospital in London and talk to them. Please employ my employ my member, employ him, and that one will get a very good job. Even if you are that person, somebody has the royal around the whole country to get you a job. When you get your job, will anybody have to beg you to go and give him money to appreciate him? You don't have to manipulate people to enjoy the benefits of your labor as a pastor. But many pastors will rather do it the other way around and go through the route, go through the path of manipulation manipulation rather than telling them the truth that you have a role to play in your success success is not supernatural alone even though there is the hand of god in it you have a role to play supernatural is a compound word made up of the word super and natural god does the super you must do the natural it is when the natural has ended and you have reached your peak you have done your best that god steps in let me tell you what you must do from today. What you must do to become the best. What you must do to a point where people will be looking for you. You know there are some people, until you find them, nothing is done. <laughs> there are some people, now what today? Uh, if anything happens to Cristiano Ronaldo, they will look for the best hospital in Spain. Ah, his leg must not be. Why will a man get to a point, a whole team, there are other players on the bench, that guy had built up himself to a point where he is indispensable in the team. Anytime Messi doesn't play for Barcelona, they're in trouble. And you hear that word, a tree doesn't make a forest. Although in leadership, that is different, like I always say. But in certain institutions, there are some people that when they appear, their presence on the field alone is motivation to other players. Their presence on the field is inspiration. Remember when Zinedine Zidane was playing for France? Even when he wasn't scoring goal, when you stand behind beside Zidane, Zidane as your as your as your captain, the inspiration is there. That oh my captain is here, the best in the world. If Zidane has an injury on his leg, the whole French country will be in trouble. Why will some people be looked for, be egg hunted, and others will be pushed aside? Value, not volume. Value. As Christians, our orientation must be transformed from today. Number one. You must stop making academic qualification your hand. It must begin to be the means to an end. The first stage you must pass through is to be academically qualified. But you must not stop there. The world is no longer controlled by people who have masters and BSc degrees. BSc degree is too common and ordinary. Masters degree are too common and ordinary. You must reduce your focus on degrees 
and start emphasizing skills, hard skills, ability to use a particular software to do all kinds of unimaginable design, ability to use software to design suits, design clothes, and do it in a way that everybody will open their mouth wide. How did he do it? Your degree and your BSc and master should be like the first stage. So if you see them as your end, you can't be competitive. There are millions of BSc holders in our world. Millions of master's degree holders in our world. They are just coasting along the cloud. When they are mentioning the name of rich people, people that are not even consumed by the passion for money, but they are using their money to affect society. How many master's holders do they mention? They mention people like Bill Gates. He divided his income, his, his money, his profit, his wealth into two, gave half of it to HIV people, gave all of them are doing those things because they are giving value to the society. Until you become value driven and not degree driven, you cannot be competitive. But if you want to be on the same spot, there are some people that want to be on the same spot. That's why when Jesus meets people on the road, when blind Bartimaeus was praying to Jesus, have mercy on me. Jesus said, what do you want? Bible scholars have argued back and forth on that statement. Didn't Jesus know he was blind? But Jesus asked him, what do you want? A blind man is saying, have mercy on me. You're asking him, what does he want? What does that mean? Not every blind person wants their eyes to be opened. There are some people they enjoy to be on the same spot. They want to be average. But if you don't want to be average, and you want to be sought after, you want people to look for you, to solve problems for them in your own area, whether you're a pastor, or you are a bishop, or you're an accountant, or an engineer, you want to stand out from the crowd. You must de-emphasize degrees and seek for hard skills. If you don't do those things, you'll be average. Number two, you must start building up yourself from now as you enter 2018 on at least one software scale. There are so many software that people use in different professions. People in civil engineering, they have software they use. Some of them are globally acceptable software. Some of these are expensive. I understand many of us may not be able to afford it from Africa, but there are so many variants online now. You want to buy Microsoft Office, Word, PowerPoint, Excel, they will tell you it's $300. But you go online, Google, and search and see some, some, some on sale. Some that are older versions. They just have so many companies are reselling and changing the version and they are selling at very cheap rate. Others will tell you, we're, we're going to rent it out to you. We won't give it to you, but we'll rent it. And you pay for something very small. When there is a will, there is always a way. When people want to get things done and they are committed to it and you focus and you are focused and you are focused. One day, one, one way or another, you meet one man and will tell you, oh, I have a, an MS office on my sister. I don't want it. Come and take it off. Come and take it. Come and take it. Look for something that other people don't have. A software that other people don't have. Go and look for it. And learn it. Put that thing on your resume. There are thousands of computer software. You don't want to do that. You want to pray that God will make you to become the best. Better than Bill Gates. Better than Warren Buffett. Ha! You will stay for a long time praying that prayer. The God we serve is a God of excellence. It doesn't reward mediocrity. God doesn't reward mediocrity. If any mediocre has told you that God rewarded him, it wasn't God that rewarded him. Satan also performs miracles. Satan does signs and wonders. Satan can raise the dead. Satan can give people job. Many people are rich by Satan. Many people do rituals and they become rich and they get contract. They get big jobs with Microsoft. People can do it. There are many people that are in, in Illuminati cult that use all kinds of occulting activity to get jobs. And when they see them in interview, the person interviewing him already knows he's a member of the court. They give him the job. But if you want to get it from God, God will never excuse your mediocrity for spirituality. If you're mediocre and you're doing things very poor, God does not give miracles to people who have made a career out of mediocrity. God does not give miracles. You can get it from the, from the devil. You can get it from Satan. Not all miracles are from God. Regardless of who is performing it. Regardless of who is performing it. Not everything is from God. Number three. You must commit to networking. Africans don't network. Networking for global thing. But many Africans can network. 
to do all kind of horrible things. Not everybody, don't get me wrong, there are great Africans that network, but I'm speaking to people that are struggling and are complaining and are bitter against God. Even if you're not in that level and you are still at a level you don't like, you want to go higher. Begin to network. I have lost a lot of opportunities. Lost, I mean lost, because I didn't network with people. We don't attend conferences, even within our cities, within our country. Conferences that are not expensive, that are cheap, we are not trained to do those things. We just want the result quick, 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 quick. Networking and conferencing is not in our blood system. I am guilty of the same thing. My wife has to be pushing me, pushing me. Oh, attend that conference, attend that conference. It is when you go to conference, you sit down and you meet people of global minds and you begin to exchange ideas. Anything can be born. Because when opportunity mix is with preparation, success is always born. You won't know the day you will sit up beside the CEO of the biggest company in the world and you exchange cards, and that is it. I can give you so many stories of people who connected greatness because of networking. Africans are not trained to network. They will not network. We will not network. I'm speaking about business networking. Networking at the top, not networking of society of 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 a uh, of a uh, woman networking of society of brothers and whatever that was i'm talking about being a global player attending conferences the, it, based on your capacity if you cannot go to america go to italy go to the world your city look for brilliant minds in your city they always do an association of engineers conference accountants conferences all of these conferences are across the globe if you have the means to go abroad please go Please go, if you have the means to go abroad, to attend those conferences, rather than investing in what I call downward investment, rather than putting your money in liabilities, invest your money in assets. Look for people that are brilliant and are doing great things. Anywhere John Maxwell is speaking, John Maxwell, if you can afford that conference, go to that conference. John Maxwell trains leaders, trains great men, president of nations. So any conference he's doing, you can be sure people of incredible incredible reputations are there and pedigree where you go to short conferences you network networking can bat excellence can bat greatness can bat success can bat opportunities that you will never get when you are in your room how many of our pastors tell christians to network and go for conferences the only networking that we do is inside the church monday to sunday networking where has it taken us to when I'm speaking to Africans, I'm speaking to myself because I am a product of this thing I'm talking about. And I'm correcting so many things now. And I don't care whether people like me or not. I am not a result-oriented person. I'm a process-oriented man. If the process is wrong, I won't accept the result. I'm not perfect. I've made many mistakes. I still make mistakes. But in my heart, I always connect to process. The process is wrong. Even though the result is right, no, God will judge me because of the process, not results. Because I have studied my scriptures and I've seen God doesn't reward products, He rewards and judges process. <laughs> networking is not networking, come to church seven days a week. The networking I'm talking about is the networking in your own area of career. The greatest networking in this world is your relationship with God. That, there is no doubt about that. I put that as number one. But next to that, you must create time to network with great minds. You don't do that and you sit down in your house and you are praying and fasting. Many people pray and fast and pray and fast until they are 50 and 60 and 70 and 80 and they die. And the graveyard has accepted so many talents. Dr. Miles Moreau said, the graveyard is the fat, most fertile piece of land on earth. Because inside the graveyard are many books that people have refused to write. Inside the graveyard are many banks people refused to start. Inside the graveyard are many music albums people refused to make. You will not be part of the statistics in the name of Jesus. How is your resume, CV? You are a professional. And you have been, I've seen so many resumes. I've worked with people. I'm a consultant. I do interviews. Sometimes I get I get employed in places myself and I do projects for companies and whatever. 
Resume is the number thing, number one thing that they see and that they used to make up their mind about you. And I did an advert for a job in one of my small businesses about two years ago, and I invited people to submit their resumes. I got like 500 responses within a week. PhD holders, master's degree holders. Oh my God. When I began to look at resumes that people have written, I selected 10 and using small in between, or starting with small, putting capital in between, and your resume is the first point. Your resume is the first image builder. It is your image maker. If you're looking for greater things, greater heights, you must do everything possible to have the best resume. All of these things are free on Google. Go on Google and type accountant resumes. Type engineer's resume. No, electrical engineer's resume. You see thousands of results. You begin to pick resumes that are written by people in America. And you see people the way they are. And then you look for the best. There are so many self-teaching tutorials on YouTube on how to write resumes. Africans will not do that. We will rather go and pray that God will take our resume from the bottom of the list and put it on top of the table of the recruiter. That is how we were trained. I must be the first and not the last. It is scriptural. <laughs> I must be the first and not the last. We will not give you a job as a pilot if you are not trained as a pilot. Otherwise, you will crash the plane. I must be the first and the last. We will never get you. I must be the first and the last. We will never get you that job in that hospital. If you are not a trained medical doctor, you will kill people. You will put scissors in the nose instead of putting scissors on the side. And God will take the blame for it. We have a lot of house cleaning to do in Africa, particularly among Christians. A lot of house cleaning. You know, I'm a pastor and I counsel people. And when I begin to see the way people think and they talk, our people have been brainwashed. Our people have been brainwashed. People that are not pastors won't understand what I'm saying. Because when you talk to people, I get messages on my messenger. I want to be this. I want to be that. When I ask them question, what have you done? Zero. Send me your resume. It is upside down. But they will spend 18 hours in the church every day. It is not their fault. It is not their fault. The Bible says, smite the shepherd and the sheep will scatter. So when the shepherd have been smitten, with the spirit of manipulation, they will scatter the destiny of the sheep. They will scatter the destiny of the sheep. That is what we are we are experiencing, and that is why we are all coming together in our respective platforms. Some of us that have seen one or two little results and have overcome some of these things, we are coming together to speak to our brothers and sisters and to, to lend them some of the little wisdom that we have. All of us are still growing and learning. Nobody knows everything. I am not an island of knowledge. I'm still learning from many people. But the little things I have learned and I've managed to capture by virtue of my experience and exposure and education, I see that I have a lot of role to play in the transformation of Africa and in the transformation of the mindset of our friends, our Christian friends. The last thing I'm going to talk about today is communication and presentation and writing. Communication, presentation, and writing. As you go into 2018, what do you think you will do about your writing skills? Communication skills. Do you think you can stand before United Nations and give a speech without making a mistake in your words? Have you prepared yourself for that level? But you are praying, Lord, I want 2018 be a better year. Oh, Lord, I want accelerated... On the 31st of December, you will see the prayer point people are praying. My fellow Christians are praying. Lord, everything I have missed for the past seven years, I want you to give me double for my trouble, triple for my trouble. I want you to take me from the floor, put me on the top. And one million people are praying. At the end of the year, you will actually find 10 people coming out to verify and validate that they have found changes in their life and career. Because pastors don't teach people the truth. How will God take you as a janitor and make you the MD of a company when you do not know how to write and present very well? I employed people to my a small company we started some years back. Ten people were employed from Africa. I won't mention the country. I have fired nine of them. 
I have fired nine of them. Number one, they don't listen to instructions. Number two, they're looking for quick, quick success. Quick, they're looking for shortcuts. Give them instructions. Step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. They will jump from step one to step five and omit two, three, and four. I will ask them, did you see two, three, and four? They will not go back. Oh, I'll correct it, sir. Oh, I'll correct it, sir. When they correct it again, they will omit three and four. They will do two. Ah, why do you leave three and four? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Then you give that to them to correct. They will do three. They will leave four. I will be frustrated. Master's degree holder who are doing PhDs cannot write one sentence. When you use I, you must follow with am. They will, be, they will use is or was. When you use we, you must follow with either ha or wa, depending on the circumstance. Simple sentence. We were not trained that way in many of our schools in Africa. We were not trained that way. So you've got to retrain yourself. You want to be competitive. You want people to look for you. Ah, it's not my prayer. Hey. I have never seen cases where people that do not know how to speak English, except in few occasions where God performed miracles that I've seen, more than 99% of that cases, you must go and learn English. Go to a school where they learn English. I've seen cases where an, an, an evangelist cannot speak English, and he opens his mouth, and he went for a crusade, and he begins to speak English. But that happened once in his lifetime. Never again did he experience it. Because God is a God of principle. God is a God of principle. He is not a respecter of person, but he is a respecter of principle. Your communication, presentation, and writing skills must be impeccable. Flawless. Flawless. There are all kinds of books and materials on Google, on YouTube. Even with this 10, 10 minutes every day you spend, how to write effectively. How, there are so many software that are able to write and correct your word. Our people don't want short things. They want quick fixes. That is why the gap between, that's why many richer, all the richest people in the world, majority are not Christians. Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, uh, Max Zuckerberg, all of them are not Christians. Because the Christians are looking for quick fixes and shortcuts. <laughs> it is an embarrassing trend to have. Jesus is embarrassed, ashamed, and disgraced by this lifestyle that we have. Because it was an excellent God. Excellence. Jesus was excellent. He was so excellent that when he died, they took his clothes. They were fighting on his clothes. Sharing his clothes. Sparkling. Bible scholars tell us Jesus' clothes was sparkling white. Sparkling white. How was he washing his clothes? I don't know. <laughs> I don't say Jesus was God or not 100%. He was God and he was man. He had a dual character. So he functioned fully as man. Functioned fully as God. That was why he was hungry. If he was God, he wouldn't be hungry. Jesus was weary. If he was God, he wouldn't be weary. Jesus felt like sleeping. If he was God, he wouldn't be sleeping. So he functioned fully as man, functions fully as God. So I want to encourage you as I close this session that you and I begin to look, look at... I've begun to look at my life and critically. Where was I in 2016, 2017? I've seen a lot of areas that need changes, corrections. Even if I cannot undo all of those corrections at the time, let me start from somewhere. I don't want to get to a place and they tell me people are better than me. You can't be better than me. So even at the level that I am now, and I know that there are millions of people better than me in the world, I am always aiming to grow, to grow. Little changes. The Japanese call it continuous improvement. Every day, changing little. When you change by 1% every day, 1% every day. In 30 days, you have changed by 30%. So don't have an idea. I want you to change everything in a day. You will not do it. You can't do it. I'm sleeping for 10 hours. Let me change it to 8 hours. I will cut 2 hours. No, if I sleep for 10 hours, I want to cut it to 2 hours. You won't be able to do it. Little, little changes. And then we can focus prayers on the right thing. Instead of praying for irrelevant things, we can start praying for sinners. Praying that God should create and raise leaders. In war torn countries, praying for the diseased, the oppressed. Instead of praying, God, give me a new career, give me a new job, and you are not qualified for that job. And because somebody shared a testimony that he got a job because he did something, you believe that everybody that shares testimony, that testimony came from God. There are people who share testimony and package lies and share testimony. There are many things we can't, I mean, we, we can't be saying on here now. 
because our ears are full our eyes have, have seen a lot in this generation when you hear 100 testimonies you believe 10 out of them you leave the 90 people to god <laughs> i don't know you believe 10 because many people cook lies put lies add it uh they 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 put all kind of things they embellish it and they oh i want to tinkle the hair of people tinkle their hair oh and, and they say it and you believe it and do it and it doesn't work for you i say god is biased god is biased ah oh well, maybe they are pursuing me, my family maybe there's a witch or something there is no witch anywhere jesus has defeated satan irrevocably irretrievably colossians 2 14 and 15 having spoiled principalities and powers he made a public ridicule of them jesus did a perfect work irrevocable irretrievably satan was fixed on the cross fixed permanently satan is never our problem our problem is with knowledge and i want to encourage you this afternoon that by tomorrow i'm going to come up again with day 13 of our value system change challenge please kindly let me share this link on the timeline it's going to bless somebody change somebody i want you and other africans and myself to let's lay down a legacy of a better life for our children it is the foundation we lay today that your children will build upon tomorrow many of us are blaming our parents my dad didn't do this my mom didn't do this don't let your children blame you too that is what i tell my friends we have blamed our parents so much for what they did not do don't let your children say ah what kind of daddy do i have do i have, did I have? let your children enter into rest no parent wants his child to struggle many of us struggled let them enter into rest <laughs> rest build up a platform of excellence for them and wisdom so your stopping point becomes their starting point that is my charge to you today god bless you so much sister stella god bless you brother adebayo god bless you brother adebayo adam Olekun, god bless you i see you tomorrow i love you all thank you for staying up tonight it's quite late i appreciate you so much i speak to you again tomorrow by the grace of god god bless you have a nice day